Welcome to Rise Up and Follow Jesus Christ with Pastor David Featherstone. The video ministry of Greater Second Baptist Church. Today, Pastor Featherstone wants you to know. But the love got to come from our hearts. Our, our heart got to be directed. And then he said, into the patience of Christ. We've got to be long suffering. We've got to be able to, 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 to not try to have everything right now. We've got to be able to hold on and hang on. We want to welcome you to our fellowship of believers. Now, let's prepare our hearts and our minds in the worship of our Lord through the discovery of His Word. This is another day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We're grateful and thankful for this another Lord's Day. We're thankful that the Lord has been good to us and he has allowed us to live to see another day. And for that, we tell him thank you. Uh, we're grateful to be able to come back on YouTube. Thank you for viewing with us over the uh, a whole year. We are now one year into our virtual worship and God has so blessed us to where we can do this uh, by way of YouTube. And we thank you for your viewing over this whole year. We thank our uh, media technician, our youth minister, uh, Minister Jason Wrightout for his commitment and help. We could not have done the YouTube without his talents and contribution that he made to the ministry. So we're, we're indebted to him plus him preaching, uh, every second Sunday has been a blessing. Have y'all saw the way he does on the screen, the backdrops he has, how much, how good that is? Uh, I was talking to somebody about that and they were saying that he come off with so much ease. Now that's a non member and watch it every Sunday morning and talk about how he enjoy uh, minister Jason right out. And so we thank God for him and his family and all that he does now to be a blessing to this ministry. Uh, good news tomorrow, which you know, when you see this on Sunday, uh, it has been taped. A recording. And so we're recording Thursday night here at the Greater Second Baptist Church. But tomorrow is Friday, the 19th. And my wife and I will go to Baptist Hospital tomorrow at noon and get our second vaccine. And uh, I'll be grateful for that. It just gives us uh, so much more comfort. Uh, since we've been vaccinated, we still going to wear our masks. I'm going to tell y'all what they're doing in Texas, what they're doing in Mississippi. That's their business. Uh, your pastor. I'm going to still wear my mask. I'm still going to wash my hands. I'm still going to do social distancing, even though I done had both vaccines. And we're going to give this thing a while uh, before we do uh, whatever we're going to do. As it relates to us. Coming back to church in person, let me say this, and you'll be reading about it in a letter coming out no later than the end of the month. But now we are going to focus on vaccination. Let's focus on that. Let's everybody focus on getting vaccinated. And then as we go, uh, even our young people, uh, I think it'd be where they can start getting vaccinated. Our teens and uh, 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 young adults, hopefully, is coming. So I want the church to focus on let's get vaccinated. And the more we get vaccinated, the better off uh, we will be as when and whatever we, whenever we come back inside of the sanctuary for worship. And then we are just grateful for the uh, uh, COVID-19 release package that President Biden and uh, has approved and 
Checks are going out. So I know many of us will be happy because that's I'm saying this because I saw where it's going to help a lot of poor people. And I just want everybody to be grateful and thankful and use it wisely. And don't forget to give uh, uh, your 10 percent to the Lord as you get blessed uh, through this stimulus relief package. Let's do all we can to continually do what's good and what's right in the sight of the Lord. Thank you, Greater Second, for your faithfulness uh, over the year from March 2020 to March of 2021. We still here and we're here grateful and thankful to the Lord, but also thankful for your obedience, for your stewardship, for all that you've done to hang in there. And as we said on the last time we shared from First Thessalonians, let's stand firm. So we want you to be blessed. And all of the bereaved families, we know you buried your loved one, but we know that grief is not over when we leave the cemetery or go back home. So we want to still uh, lift you up and let you know that we're praying for you and we're yet praying with you. And we thank the Lord for Reverend Stocker coming home uh, last weekend. So he's at home. We thank the Lord for Nitra and Chandra being her caregiver, Chandra Harris, and all of those that's been sick and in the hospital. And we just want to lift up uh, Brother Jesse Sanders. That's Dr. D.L. Richardson's brother. And he was our floor technician here took care of the black floors for the last five years and he's critically ill now. And uh, we just asking that the church will lift up Jesse Sanders. That's Pastor D.L. Richardson's brother and a friend of the Featherstone family. So we just lift him up and his family and his children in this. So let us uh, make ready now to hear a word from the Lord. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you now for keeping us safe, keeping us together as the body of Christ located here at 5615 Garrett Springs Road. We thank you for our YouTube ministry for a whole year. And Lord, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy. And we now come uh, lifting up all of those who are yet sick and shut in and praying that you would provide them the care and the comfort and the medical attention that they need. Those families that are bereaved, we just praying for comfort and an eternal perspective as it relates to being absent from the body and being present with the Lord. We thank you now for the Greater Second Baptist Church. We thank you for the Bible. We thank you for our teaching ministry. And now, Lord, as we uh, come to this part of Second Thessalonians, as Paul began to close uh, this chapter and this book of Second Thessalonians, we ask that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart will be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, I pray. Amen. We come now with chapter three of Second Thessalonians. Let me say in the outset how grateful I am to be a Bible student. I know you are, and I'm not saying this for any accolades or anything. I'm saying this because the Bible has been my foundation over the last 40 years as a Christian. Being able to read and study God's word has helped me walk upright. And as we uh, been in First Thessalonians and Second Thessalonians, it's been a blessing for me. And I just hope that you have enjoyed the study, uh, learning a little bit about the end time and what to expect. And Paul now coming uh, to the close of this book, he says in chapter 3, of Second Thessalonians, and I'm going to read verses one through five, and then begin uh, three outline message. 
Reading from the New King James Version, Paul says, chapter 3, verse 1, and through verse 5, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we command you. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. I want to talk about today, what is your prayer request? What is your prayer request? If I can tell the truth on myself publicly, uh, I know that my prayer life could be better, but I am praying. I am a proudful uh, pastor, but I look at my prayer life and I know it could be improved upon. Paul, coming to the end of this, Paul says, finally, brethren, finally, mean that he is now doing like a Baptist preacher when he said, I'm getting ready to close. Uh, finally, mean I'm coming to the end of this letter. And I have told you much truth. Uh, Paul is talking about, and he get to that finality point, but he says, brethren, which let us know he's talking to Christians. Uh, we shared, which is some of uh, chapter one, where Paul was writing about, and we called it a glance at the second coming of Jesus Christ. Paul, Paul talked about Christ coming back. And then he talked about, and we talked about an evil partnership. Uh, uh, we're coming to a part of the church age when the, the, the church will be taken out of here and there will be a seven year tribulation period. And during that tribulation period, uh, Satan will empower, uh, Antichrist. And the Antichrist will have as his partner the false prophet. And for those seven years, there will be an evil partnership as it relates to mankind on earth. And then we talked about last week that Paul said that, uh, but we ought to stand firm. That the church, in view of all that we are faced with, we ought to stand firm. So I come uh, 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 in the close of this, as Paul said, finally, brother, and I don't talk to you about all of the things we talked about. We've talked about the second coming of Jesus Christ. We've talked about Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. We've talked about uh, the, uh, uh, Christ coming back with the church. And then he, we talked about that the church ought to be able to stand firm doing the church earthly existence. And so now Paul says something in chapter three, as he closes it, verse one, he said, finally, brethren, pray for us. That's where I get the title from. Uh, pray for us, meaning that Paul is asking the church to pray for him. As I looked at it, I want to suggest to us that all of us ought to have a prayer request. I think it's good that we all ought to have a prayer partner. We ought to have someone that we can call up to pray with us, that we don't believe we'll get on the telephone after we hang up and spread our business all over town. But there is prayer partners that's important in the life of a Christian. And Paul now is saying, pray for us that, here we go now, what I want us to begin 
The first outline, I'm calling it intercessory prayer. I want to remind us, as I was looking at this outline, is what is your prayer request? If, 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 if you had to be asked, if you was asked now, what is you, what do you want somebody to pray for you? Uh, uh, or do you want people to pray for you? Well, I do. I want to suggest and keep uh, encouraging and inviting GSBC to pray for your pastor. And as we pray, I want us now to look and see Paul's prayer request. And maybe that will help us understand a little bit about some good things that the church ought to be praying for or we ought to have on our prayer request list. And Paul said uh, that I want to be pacific. I don't want to, I don't want to be in general. You just shooting up uh, any kind of request to the Lord. I want to tell you what I want you to pray for. And Paul wanted the church to be pacific in this prayer for him. And the first thing was, it's right there in verse one. Finally, brethren, pray for us. Here it is that the word of the Lord might run swiftly. That's it right there. That the word of the Lord or the message of the Lord may run swiftly or let me say it like the uh, New International said, uh, spread rapidly. Paul here has a request for a spiritual thing. Paul is not praying, praying for a gold chariot, uh, all white horses. He's not praying for a new wardrobe. He's not praying for a house on the Sea of Galilee. Paul said that my prayer, uh, I mean, my request for the church at Thessalonica is that you would pray that the word of the Lord would spread rapidly. Are you concerned about God's word getting out? Uh, are we concerned uh, as we get ready and start making plans, at least dreaming about and hoping and looking forward to gathering back, coming back into normal worship, uh, assembly, getting back together? But I want to ask this question to us as we have been out a whole year. Are we concerned about the word of God reaching other folks, are we concerned that we as a church have been commissioned and commanded by the Lord to spread the good news of Jesus Christ during this pandemic? I know we've been at home. We've been restricted. We've been six feet apart. We've been socially distanced. We hadn't been going uh, uh, to visit family and friends. We just went to Walmart and and, and, and Kroger and Sam's and done the thing we had to do and got out. We didn't, uh, we stayed six feet in there. But the question now is, have the church forgotten that we are to spread the good news of Jesus Christ? Uh, let me share with you. Paul said, I want you to pray for us. And the us, he's talking about him and his uh, 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 means with him. And ladies with him, that's happening with the gospel. He said that, that this gospel, this good news, this message of God, I know there's a lot about the word of God, but let me just break it down, break it down, break it down. Uh, uh, I want us to be able to get the word out that there was a man who was born as a child of my virgin. He was born in Bethlehem, Judea. He grew up as a carpenter's son and he went to Calvary at an early age, about 33 years old. And out on the cross of Calvary, he died. They hung him high and stretched him wide and he died on a cross to pay for your sins and mine. And they buried him in a borrowed tomb. And early the third day morning, God raised him from the dead and he ascended into heaven about 50 days later and he's seated at the right hand of the Father and one day he's coming back. 
Can we spread that? Can we get that word out? Can we share that with everybody that we can? Because Paul said that I want you to pray that the message of the word of the Lord may spread rapidly or swiftly. And not only that it spread, uh, Paul said, I want you to pray that it be glorified, uh, that it be honored. Just like you are honoring it, the word of God, you know, I have not, you know this, so uh, just charge this for repetition in those who don't know it. But I was raised in the church. I come from a good family. I come from a, back, a Baptist background family. I come uh, being uh, born again uh, during my childhood in the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. I was baptized in Patterson Lake. That's between Shell Lake and Park and uh, uh, on Highway 75. And I, I know I was saved at an early age, but if the truth be told, I didn't start reading the Bible. Until after September the 30th, 1979. And from that, I began to understand God's word. I began to get a, a pretty good understanding of how important it is to believe the word of God, but also share the word of God. But what I have done over the last 40 years of my life, I have welcomed the word of God into my life. I, I love singing. Lord knows I do. But uh, if you give me that I can't go to but one, you give me a good singing program or a good preaching uh, gathering and say, Featherstone, you can't go to but one. I'm going to say, well, man, I wish I could go hear these singing, but I'm going to go on take this, this sermon. I'm going to go uh, to this. I, I, I said that not not saying anything against singing again. I love it, but I have welcomed into my life and into my heart. I honor the word of God. I try to obey the word of God. So Paul said, pray that as I go out, that I can spread the word of God rapidly and that as I spread it, it will be honored. It will be obeyed. Have you thought about that as a prayer request? That God use me to help spread the good news to whoever I can and help me get it out the best I can, quick as I can, and then help me welcome it and honor it into my life and obey it. And then the B part of that, I thought about the word of God being spread rapidly and being honored. I thought about also prayer helps witnessing. Prayer helps witnessing. You know this scripture, but let me just uh, reread Matthew 9, uh, chapter 37, uh, verse 37 and 38. <clears throat> Jesus talking. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, here it is, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Paul said, <clears throat> and I mean, uh, uh, Matthew said, Jesus doing the talking to his disciples, I need you to pray. The reason I need you to pray, because the harvest is plentiful. The labels are few. There's a whole lot of people that need to be saved, but I only have a few folks willing to go into the harvest and do the work. So I need you to pray to the Lord of the harvest, God Almighty, that he will send labors into his vineyard. So, so, so prayer will help witness. Have you been praying for people to be saved? Have you been praying for the church to spread the good news? Is that one of your prayer requests is that you would be able to be a witness for the Lord, 
that you would be able to spread the word of God rapidly, that you don't you don't have to second guess whether you're going to talk about Jesus or not. You're going to tell folks about Jesus. Let me read uh, Ephesians. Well, let me read uh, Colossians four and three. Colossians four and three says, uh, meanwhile, praying also for us. This is Paul that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mysteries of Christ, for which I am also in chain, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Paul said that I want you to pray, even though I'm in chains. But the reason I'm in chains is for the word of God. But I want you to pray that I will spread the word of God, even though I'm in chain, pray that a door be open. Pray that God will provide an opportunity for me to go out and share the good news. You know, I believe that prayer will be answered if we would pray it. Even as we go about our daily business during a pandemic, you'll be amazed of how God will still use us as we socially distance, as we uh, uh, stay in our homes, as we talk on the phone how God will use us to be a blessing and be a witness. I got a gentleman now that I'm discipling and uh, we're having life skill uh, classes. And, you know, I'm trying to help him learn life skills because he spent the, uh, 30 of the last 50 years of his life incarcerated. And so we're teaching life skills to him and I'm talking to him on the phone and every day we're we're talking and I'm witnessing to him and I, 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 I made sure he get a word for the day every three months and read it. And he's not committedly reading it right now, but I remind him every day, read this, read this. Because I want the word of God to, 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 to run rapid in his life. And I want him to honor it, the word of God. So I just use that illustration they let you know some of what I'm doing on a daily basis. And I know many of you are. And I'm just encouraging all of us to do what we can to make sure that we pray and we request spiritual prayer requests. Uh, I'm not as concerned about houses and cars and clothes and jewelry as I am the salvation of souls now. I can't say I've always been like that. But now in my life now, I want to see folks saved. Let's move on. The second outline, Paul says, is, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. Paul said the second thing I want you to pray for is I want you to pray for me being delivered from unreasonable or unrighteous and wicked or evil men. Paul said, now I want you to pray because uh, I'm having a lot of opposition. I'm facing opposition from enemies who were unrighteous or should I say uh, aggressively unrighteous. Paul, and we, we can't really imagine in this modern time, how rough it was in the early church as it related to Satan trying to stop the spread of the gospel. It's a great time to be alive and be a Christian now. But also, we still got some enemies of the cross. We still got people that, 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 that don't like me and you. And I'm going to focus on those unrighteous or un, uh, unsaved folks. And we got a few Christians don't like us too, but we ain't going, we ain't, we ain't going there today. But you know, in, in, in Matthew, in the, what we call the Lord's Prayer, but in chapter six of Matthew, uh, there is a part of that prayer that said, deliver us from evil. Deliver us 
from evil. So Jesus was teaching in the model prayer uh, early that we ought to be mindful that God will deliver us from the evil one. Satan, if you don't know it by now, let me just tell you. Satan is after you and I. He can't rob us of our salvation, but he can stifle our witness. He can uh, hinder our testimony. He can have our life to where our lifestyle uh, won't be powerful. So our salvation, he can't handle, but he can uh, stop us or hinder us from being a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul said, I want you to pray uh, that I be delivered from this evil environment and this evil personalities that's coming after me. Let me read Romans 15. Uh, verse 30 through 32, Paul said, now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the spirit that you strive together with me in prayer to God for me. Here it is, that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, that I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Paul says, even in the Roman uh, letter, that I ask you to pray that I can be delivered from the evilness that's going on. And then he says in verse three, I don't have time to deal with this too much. He said, but the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Paul said, and the only part I want to focus on is as we go through life, the Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful as a regard to creation uh, you can read that in Psalm 119, 90. God is faithful as it relates to his promises. You can read that in Deuteronomy 7 and 9, and 2 Corinthians 1 and 18. God is faithful as it relates to his salvation. You can read that in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24. Here's one I like, and you might want to memorize this one. God is faithful in temptation. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. And then here in 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3, Paul said he is faithful to strengthen and protect us from Satan. So God is faithful, though. As we go through this, just remember that we serve a faithful God. And one of the promises that I love is God promised he will never leave us nor forsake us. He's always with us. And the last one in verse 5. Paul said, now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. The last one is Paul's prayer request is that God will direct our hearts in two areas. God will direct our hearts. Look at the two areas. The first area, he said, God direct, pray that God direct my heart into the love of God. I don't have time to break that down and deal with that, but uh, that's part of our uh, uh, belief is that God loves us and we ought to be, our hearts ought to be directed into the love of God. Uh, you know our mission, love God, love one another, love God. Our hearts, he's talking about that our hearts be directed into the love of God. Do you love God? If we love God, then we got to love one another. But the love got to come from our hearts. Our, our heart got to be directed. And then he said, into the patience of Christ. 
We've got to be long suffering. We've got to be able to, 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 to not try to have everything right now. We've got to be able to hold on and hang on in there. And let me close by saying this. The best way for God, I believe, to direct our hearts is by his word. I'm going to invite you, all of us, to go back this week and just sit down with a glass of Kool-Aid or water or nothing and read Psalm 119. It's the longest uh, uh, book in the Bible, the longest psalm, but just read it. Because as I was reading it this week, I was just reminded of how important it is to have the word of God as being the uh, agent of directing my heart. God will use his word. His word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And we can hide his word in our hearts that we might not sin against God. So he said, pray that God will direct our hearts into the love of Christ, the love of God, and into the patience of Christ. God bless you this day and always is my prayer.